Today on Larry King Now, actor Courtney B. Vance on his role in American Crime Story. You don't imitate, a lot, right? You don't imitate. You don't want to imitate. So I made the decision not to look at the footage. There's so much footage. I made the decision. I'm going to. I'm. I'm not him. I'm. I'm me. He's iconic, and so I. I'm going to make the. I'm going to cut him down to size, and I'm going to read everything I can about him. On the issue of race in America today, the hope that I, I think that we have is that the media and everyone will help us because we need to get together and talk. For our differences are vast, and they still are. And we need to. We we pride ourselves on being a melting pot, but we have not melted. Popsicles in a in a pan, that's in a, in a, a, a pot, that's all we are. We need to melt, and we have not done that. And we can't do it until we talk through who we are. Plus, you're from Michigan. What do you make of the whole Flint thing? It's a nightmare. Unbelievable. It's an absolute nightmare. Again, they're people. People of color are people. They're not animals. It's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. We're in New York with Courtney B. Vance, actor, producer. You know him from his roles in The Hunt for Red October, Hamburger Hill, and the long run on Law and Order Criminal Intent. And now Ryan Murphy has tapped Courtney along with an all-star cast that includes Cuba Gooding Jr., David Schwimmer, Sarah Paulson, John Travolta, and me. <laughs> I got, I got, I'm in five scenes for the highly anticipated new FX series, American Crime Story, the People versus O.J. Simpson variety said that you were born, born to play Johnny Cochran. They said it. <laughs> what was it like to work on a Ryan Murphy production? I know your wife, Angela Bassett, is on American Horror Story. What's it like to work with that group? Uh, you really can come in and relax. The, uh, we had three directors on our 10 episodes. Ryan did one, the fifth one, John Singleton did the one, and uh, Anthony Hemingway. And yeah. so, the worlds were very, very self-contained. Everybody knew. We were doing three and four episodes at the same time. So it was a bit, sometimes we were, we didn't quite know where we were, but we were able to ask one of the directors and they were able to get us right back to where we needed to be. At the time of the trial, you were a working actor in Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. Knocking, knocking around, getting jobs. I was, I was in, I was, uh, we were, when the Bronco chase happened, I was in Sacramento. We had just done a huge uh, scene in Panther. We marched on the Capitol. So, and then for the, uh, for the verdict, I was, uh, was in Toronto shooting a piece with uh, Nathan Lane and uh, Tony Goldwyn called The Boys Next Door. I did my scene with Nathan Lane. He was terrific. Oh, he's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Love you remember him. how you felt when the verdict was read? I was elated. I was with uh, uh, Tony Goldwyn and uh, we were in his uh, uh, trailer or in his apartment and, uh, and I screamed, yes, and he screamed, no, and we, then we looked at each other. Like, what just happened? And, and why I, do you think that happened? Do you think we, it, it was a black-white thing? It was absolutely a black-white thing. And, uh, you know, there were a couple other issues, but the, the, uh, um, the gentleman who, uh, the jury consultant told both sides that this case, at the very top, he told them both sides, told the prosecution and defense, this is a case is about race. Don't make any mistake about it. Jo Johnny heard it and uh, knew that this case was about race. Uh, and. Um, Put, uh, began to put uh, all of his, uh, um, everything into motion. But I think the prosecution was unsure or was, was uh, felt that the facts would bear out and didn't need to worry about the uh, other things, about the way Marsha looked and her hair and all those things. And that was the very things that, that toward the tail end or the middle of the trial that they started to pay attention to. Up next, we'll talk about the relevance of the O.J. Simpson case. I'll ask Courtney what it was like to work with a big and great cast. Stay with us. We're talking with Courtney B. Vance. He's one of the stars of The People vs. O.J. Simpson. It's a new FX series. It airs uh, Tuesday nights every week on FX for 10 straight weeks. So this is a 10-hour vehicle. Yes. Do we see a lot of things that the TV viewer never saw on this? How do they get in much to the scene off camera? We all know on camera. We all know on camera. We were, we were there. We, we were there every day. They detailed it out. But I think what, what, what's important and what's different about this this journey is that we we get a sense we get a chance to talk we go behind the scenes to 
to see our lives, the lawyers' lives, Shapiro's, Shapiro, Kardashian, Marsha Clark, um, Sterling Brown plays uh, Chris Darden and myself. We were able to go back. I mean, uh, there's a there's a scene where, of course, uh, you know, I I didn't think that I thought the case was a loser, and I said I'm not going to be a part of this case. And then we go, we see him at home, and his wife pulls him aside and says, "I don't know about that. I think you better relook at this." So I mean, you really get a sense that the there's a lot more going on to. I think we get a, we we know the glove, we know the you know Mark Furman, we know, but we don't know the how how they happened, how it happened that uh, Mark Furman ended up there, and uh, um, and that there, the potential there was some people didn't want him to be there. Do they hint at some relationship between Johnny and Marsha? In terms of there was kind of a chem, not a chem, I don't know what to call it. Right. There was no. There, we don't something hint between we hint the two. There was something between Chris and Darden. And that was and, that was hinted yeah, at. We didn't we didn't hint at the uh, the. There was another hint of some other hints <laughs> about uh, Mr. Cochran, but not about not with Marsha. All right. What was the difficulty to you in playing the role? Because you had to play a role of a guy we all saw every day. All right. That's the hard part. Is that we we knew him. I I didn't know him well at all, and uh, so I, I made the decision. I mean, always when when someone uh, you know Andrew Bassett played Tina Turner, Jamie Foxx uh, with uh, Ray Charles and Will Smith with Muhammad Ali. When you have to do something like that, Idris Elba with uh, Nelson Mandela, you really have to sit down before you get started and figure out how you go. How do you go in? What's the first thing you need to do to get started so you don't get lost? You don't in, imitate. In right? You don't imitate. You don't want to imitate. So I made the decision not to look at the footage. There's so much footage. I made the decision. I'm going to. I'm. I'm not him. I'm. I'm me. He's iconic, and so I. I'm going to make the. I'm going to cut him down to size, and I'm going to read everything I can about him, and then when it's time for us to get by that third episode, when I know I'm in, fully, we're just going to jump in. We're going to jump in, and I think all of the things that I've read, and will filter down and allow me to, be able to react as opposed to being in my head. Thinking that oh the mold is in should the mold be I should have I'm not going to do all that. Cuba Gooding said that he didn't want to meet with O.J. or speak with him or everything. Had Cochran lived, would you have felt the same? You wouldn't have wanted to meet with him. That's a good question. I, I don't know. That's a good. I, I probably I may have wanted to uh, uh, eventually meet him, but I wouldn't have done it. I don't think in the beginning. Do a little bit too too close. Would think I would have been influenced by you know something he would have said. Uh, and so I, I have to initially. I think uh, that's Ryan and the team wanted uh, us all, if, if it was possible, to meet the people because Marsha, uh, Sarah could have met Marsha Clark, and she eventually did, toward the tail end of our, our journey. Um, but they didn't want us to to uh, interact initially. The movie makes no stance as to guilt or innocence. Was that a what led to that decision? Because I mean, most of the world thought he did it. I mean, yeah. that's not what our our. Our, that's not what our job was. Uh, we were, we really wanted to look at. The, we have a lot of trouble today. We have a lot of things that we're dealing with, and this is a potential opportunity for us to strike a blow to the the, uh, the police brutality and things that are happening. The all policemen are not bad. Uh, when when something happens and something goes down, they're the first person that you think about calling. So we don't want to try to paint all policemen as. But this was a, a certain time period, and in, in a certain city. And if at, because we were so close to the situation, I think, and because it was on television, when the verdict came down, because we were watching every day, we were trained to be right there when the verdict came down. And when the verdict came down, everybody went to their corners. And instead of now, the third phase of the trial starts when when the media cannot help us to begin to talk about it all. None of that happened, and so I, for me, the, the the hope that I think that we have is that the media and everyone will help us because we need to get together and talk. Where our differences are vast, and they still are, and we need to we we pride ourselves on being a melting pot, but we have not melted popsicles in a in a pan. That's in a in a, uh, a pot. That's all we are. We need to melt, and we have not done that, and you, we can't do it until we talk through who we are. Was it a tough shoot? It was tough in the sense that the, 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 the sheer volume that we had to accomplish. And 
Uh, Larry, we were shooting for the most part with four and five cameras. And uh, you really had, to, and they were all moving. They weren't just stationary there. They were oh. all swirling, you know. Yeah. So we really had to have a sense, a real strong sense of where we were, who we were, what we were doing, uh, so that we weren't thrown, so that we can make our days. And that was the heart, that was the amazing, miraculous part, that we made our days, we stayed on schedule, and that we, we, we created something, I think, that was extraordinary. Up next, Ryan Murphy likes to recycle his actors. Will Courtney be returning for a second season of American Crime Story? Never know, stay with us. American Crime Story, The People vs. O.J. Simpson, airing on FX every Tuesday night for 10 consecutive weeks, and you'll be seeing a lot of it and hearing a lot about it. And our guest is one of our fine actors, Courtney B. Vance, who plays Johnny Cochran. Now, there's going to be season two of uh, American Crime Story, mm -hmm. and Murphy likes to keep people going. Are you going to be in it? I, I would like to. I, I, who knows? I, what I've heard talk of uh, Katrina. I'm uh, doing something about Katrina, so and there's any number of characters in that, so maybe, we'll see. Why are we so fascinated with crime? I don't know, Larry. I think that we, um, you know, we really are, because uh, um, it's, I think it has to do with, you know, there's uh, the, the good boy, bad boy, good girl, bad girl, the, you know, the, um, it's something that we can, we can look at and uh, I think when, when certain people go so far over the edge, we want to know why. We want to know why, what happens in that mind that creates a Charles Manson or um, an uh, O.J. Simpson or what, you know, what, what happens to a person that allows them to go from a little wonderful little baby boy or girl to something that could do something that we go, that's terrible. How could they, why would they? Do you think we also think, could I do that? We all, it's and that's in all of us. I think that's the fascinating thing. What keeps us from going over that edge? Because we all know there's an edge, and uh, approaching it, and then going over that edge is a whole. We've always, always wanted to kill someone. Oh, right? it's in, uh, the anger. The, the cut off of the car on the road. You oh, want to kill that guy that minute. It's mess. in all of us, and we, we've all gone there, but we we pull ourselves back, and it's that 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 something in our minds that that allows us to go, no, 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 no. If I let myself, if you, you're not gonna make me go there. Don't make me go there. We've all yeah. seen the we've open cash seen. register. Oh, we've all seen it. And we, you know, cause we don't want, uh, it, we always, I think we always think that it won't be us that gets caught. You like playing lawyers? I play a lot of them, don't yeah, I? Yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, they're, uh, for the most part, for the most part, they're really contained and buttoned up, but, Buttoned up, but uh, Johnny was not anything but that. You no, know, he was. He was. What do you think made him special? You, you know, think, he was a prosecutor. Yes, he was. I, but I think that's what part of what made him special—that he knew both sides, and he knew the he knew um, people's pain from seeing the firsthand the the uh, the police brutality cases that he cut his teeth on back when uh, the mayor's office was funneling. Uh, Tom Bradley was uh, was uh, one of his frat brothers. And, so he got a lot of cases come, came his way. So he knew there was a real problem in the, with the, the uh, police and the way they were trained back in that day and how they responded to people of color. It was real. Um, and so uh, he knew uh, when he was uh, representing certain, uh, you know, his clients that he knew what they were up against. And also, I mean, some of them were, you know, everyday people and he was the Michael Jacksons and the Sean Puffy Combs and all of them in between. So. He, he was a person that had his finger on the pulse in a lot of different areas. You involved in the election at all, by the way? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. My, my, my wife is. My wife is uh, one of the people that are going to go around and, and uh, uh, stump for uh, Hillary. So uh, um, very, very soon, sometime in the next week or so, she'll be going out. But you're not active? No. Just, just make sure I vote. <laughs> by choice. And yeah. you just, you know. yeah. When you do scenes in the movie of, let's say, you and John Travolta, you're, in a, you're having coffee. Mm -hmm. That's all surmised, right? No one was there. You're based on the Tubin book. Yes, uh, our, our story is based on the Tubin book. Right. So you have to invent conversations. Yes. I mean, that, that's the dramatic uh, license that, uh, that we take. Uh, 
uh, with certain certain scenes and fleshing out certain scenes and pulling back certain scenes. What's there, and certain scenes we take out so that the story goes forward. Do they argue with each other much, the defense team? Well, they were bitter rivals, all of them from the very beginning, and we we see that we 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 you know that that part we don't sugarcoat. You know they. Uh, initially, they were all in it together, uh, I think. But how do you bring people together who are, in their own right, stars, superstars in the legal field? And how do they work together? I mean, that's, that was a tricky part, as you know, for Shapiro to have brought us all together, being the, the head honcho. And then once he realized he brought us all together, he had to let us go and do our thing. And, uh, and that eventually meant there was going to be somebody who had to be lead prosecute, excuse me, lead defense attorney with uh, O.J. And so uh, eventually O.J. had to make his decision who that was going to be, and it was, it was Johnny. And, and what that would do to, what did that do to Shapiro, who brought us all together? So it was a whole ego massaging, and it was not pretty. Do you think the team believed in their client? You know, um, Larry, as you know, with defense attorneys, a lot of times they don't, they don't want to know. They don't they never important. ask, did you do it? It's not important. Now, uh, Shapiro did ask. Um, he did? In our piece, he did ask. And, uh, but, but I didn't ask, and it's not important. It wasn't important, because that's not my job. My job is not about whether or not you did it or not. It's to poke holes in the prosecution's uh, case. And so um, I, I, I didn't want to know, personally. Uh, Courtney didn't want to know. Uh, and then... Um, but I think all the attorneys, they had their opinion of it, but they kept it to themselves. Play a little game of if you only knew. I'll just throw some questions at you. Okay. What would you be doing if you weren't an actor? Working for General Motors. Building cars? Business school. Some, I, I worked there for a couple summers, and they wanted to put me through B school. You'd like to run General Motors? I don't know if I'd be running it, but I'd definitely be working there. Pet peeve. People who don't keep the bathroom clean. Hidden talent. Hmm. Like to um, cook. Actor or actress you'd like to work with? Meryl Streep. Have you worked with your wife? Yes, I have. Best thing about working in Hollywood? You get to meet a lot of great people. Worst thing about working in Hollywood? You get to meet a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Historical figure you'd like to play? Um, Frederick Douglass. Have we ever done a major movie on Frederick Douglass? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. There you go. A downside to fame? Everybody knows you, Larry. No privacy. What makes you laugh? Silly things. <laughs> <laughs> Your most cherished memory? I received a, uh, the highest honor in my high school and they, they, I got a scholarship to go there, private high school in Detroit, and they announced my name. My father, we all, every, the whole audience stood up and uh, applauded me, and I looked back, and my father was uh, fumbling with his glasses, tears streaming down his face. Next, we'll talk with Courtney about his work on Broadway, and I'll get his take on the recent Oscar controversy. Stay with us. We're back with Courtney B. Vance. He's one of the stars of The People vs. O.J. Simpson. He plays Johnny Cochran. It's running now on FX. You went to the Yale School of Drama. Did. So did Paul Newman. He did, didn't he? That's right, yeah. Your early days were mostly theater, right? Yes, yes, were. Did a lot of, uh, lot of Broadway and off-Broadway. Do you prefer it? Uh, I think it, it helps round you out. It helps you get you keep your feet on the ground when you have to be ready for any, uh, any uh, eventuality that happens. I remember we were doing Fences, and there was that transition between little boy and manhood. It was about 30 second uh, change I had, and I came out, and I was back there with my dresser, and the zipper broke. It was before zip Velcro. The zipper <laughs> broke, and there was no way to fix it. And he said, go, go out, go out. And I just did the scene with my hands between my legs there for the whole you know, 15, 20 minutes scene. I saw you in Lucky Guy on Broadway, the Nora Ephron's last play, and Tom Hanks starred in it. Mm -hmm. It was about a newsroom in New York, two, mm -hmm. two True characters in New York Daily News. The rat-a-tat language in which mm -hmm. all these guys are talking at once a minute speed, a great play. Yeah. 
Was that a tough rehearsal? It was very tough rehearsal. There was, there was more light cues and sound cues in that than it. Uh, yeah, they would flash lights on. Or... That's right. It's like a Broadway musical. So yeah. we really was a, it was a tough uh, rehearsal. It was a tough tech. So we uh, in a tough preview period. So we we previewed for about four weeks so we can get everything down. What was Tom Hanks like to work with? Just, he's so inclusive and so wonderful. Just uh, he he made us all. He took us to a. Uh, the uh, Yankees Mets game and, and paid for the booth for us to be in. It just he took us to Dizzy's Jazz Club and, and paid for us all to be. He just was so glad to be among us. And to this day, we're all tight. When somebody has a birthday, everybody emails and says happy birthday. I think Mara Cherney's birthday is uh, tomorrow. Happy birthday, Mara. It was a hell of a show. Yes. And Hanks is a hell of a stage actor. He really is. Yeah, I think it was his first foray on the I think so, yeah. I think it was. It was. It was amazing. Want to go back to the stage? I'll definitely go back. Your first film was Hamburger Hill. Mm -hmm. That was an interesting thing for a first project. It was, and we were, were all first-time actors, and uh, when it rained, there was no trailers. When it rained, we sat in the rain. When it was, you know, it was very uh, politically a, a tumultuous during that time. I think uh, Aquino had uh, just uh, taken over, and um, we had armed guards with us as we went to the countryside. We lost a couple of people during that shoot. Somebody got electrocuted, I think, and somebody got bitten by a snake, something. It was it was, that was your first idea. film though, right? First film, yeah. What's your take on the recent Oscar controversy? Well, you know, Larry, I, I think that uh, we've got work to do. I mean it's the when the Oscars are over and uh, we're still gonna have the same amount of work to do and we on both sides. Uh, the Academy is starting to do certain things and pressure's been brought to bear and but I, I at the same time I think uh, People of color, you know, when uh, somebody is in a movie that's, uh, uh, that's African-American, we should all do, use those little fingers that we have and tell everybody, we can make, let's make a $100 million movie. Let's go. Everybody go. So because uh, when, when I remember when um, Malcolm X came out, uh, it should have been a $100 million movie, and it wasn't. We need to go and make our movie, put our power in, our, in the box office. Make sure we go and see our own films. And when someone else is, uh, when Will Smith is in his movie, everybody go. That's the power. Then they would see how powerful we are. And at the same time, in the Academy, I'm an Academy, my wife and I are Academy voters. We need to make sure we sponsor uh, Academy, new Academy members. Why don't they go? I don't know. But uh, if you don't vote, you don't count. If you don't vote, you have no say. It's right there for you. Go, vote. Go to the movies. Then don't complain. Don't complain. Broadway seems to have no problem with it. No. I mean, so Alexander Hamilton, hell of a show. Mm -hmm. They're all black, except for the king. That's something. Playing Jefferson. Mm -hmm. And everybody's fine with everybody's it. Everybody's fine. I mean, it's you know, look, you 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 build it, they will come. If you if you if you set it up so that people. It's, it's a little different. You, you market and you let them know it's a little different. People will embrace it. Eventually, they will embrace it. You, we have to make sure we 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 can't say that no people won't like it, and uh, um, we, we're not gonna, you know, if that was the case, we wouldn't have a, we wouldn't have a black president. We wouldn't we wouldn't have people uh, of color in, in in the industry at all. But we've got to uh, you know bring people bribe, bring people's expectations up instead of. Dumbing down. You're from Michigan. What do you make of the whole Flint thing? It's a nightmare. Unbelievable. It's an absolute nightmare. Again, they're people. People of color are people. They're not animals. You would not do that if you, there was if there was a, if this was a town in, in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, <laughs> or where I went to, to high school at Country Day. They would test that before they made sure they went out ahead and did, done that. It's no play on no play on words. It's an American horror story. It's an American. It is unconscionable and falls right on right in the governor's lap, right in his lap. You got it. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, sir. My guest, Courtney B. Vance. American Crime Story airs Tuesday nights on FX. And remember, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. I'll see you next time.